Growing up, you might have heard of DC electricity and AC electricity either in school or at home. But these two ideas were likely never fully explained to you. In the Pyro EDU course, An Introduction to Modern Electronics, we briefly covered the topic of AC versus DC. So now we'll go more in depth to get a better understanding of what the differences are and why they are both important. DC electricity is a stable form of electricity and if we made a graph of the voltage of a battery versus time, it would look like this straight blue line. Notice it holds a steady voltage. When we use DC electricity to drive digital electronics, like in the Introduction to Digital Electronics course, information was encoded either with a plus 5 volt or 0 volt. Everything was done using DC electricity to keep stable states. Now, if we take a look at the voltage coming from a household power outlet, it will look more like this graph of voltage versus time. The voltage changes back and forth between 125 volt and minus 125 volt at a certain frequency. In this case, at 60 hertz, which means it alternates back and forth 60 times per second. So for analog electronics, instead of using this plus 5 volt, 0 volt, for information encoding, like in digital electronics, we can actually vary the amplitude voltage or the frequency to mean different things. One additional and more tricky method that can be used to encode information into analog signals is by changing what is called the phase of the signal. So instead of a continuous wave, the wave could change in the middle of the sequence to display some meaning to a receiver circuit. One other neat thing about AC electricity is that since it can alternate at different frequencies, we can actually connect AC signals to speakers and hear a tone. Throughout this course, we will be using this idea so that we can hear the change in our analog circuits. And we will also be experimenting with what is called an oscilloscope so that we can actually see the AC signal. For our first analog experiment, we're going to build a small circuit that generates an AC signal at about 1500 Hz or 1.5 kHz. We will measure the AC signal in two ways. First, we'll use a speaker to hear the tone and verify it is working. And second, we'll use a PC oscilloscope tool to visually see the tone on a computer screen. To build this experiment, we'll need the analog electronics parts kit the jumper wire kit, and a breadboard. Now, from the parts kit, we'll need a 1 mega ohm and 100 kilo ohm resistor, 5 10 kilo ohm resistors, and 1 100 ohm resistor, 2 10 nanofarad capacitors, some jumper wire from the wire kit, the stereo jack breakout board, a stereo cable, 1 741 op amp, and 2 9 volt battery connectors. Now take some time and build the circuit. We'll show the step-by-step -step construction process now. The two 9-volt battery connectors serve a unique purpose. One connector will be our plus 9-volt or positive voltage rail. The other one will be our minus 9-volt or negative voltage rail. These two power connections will be fed into the 741 op amps V++ and V++ pins as seen in the schematic. With the circuit built, 
let's power it up and plug in our headphones to see if we can hear a tone. You should be able to hear a less than ear piercing tone coming from your headphones or speaker, but it gets annoying pretty quickly. Next, we actually want to see the signal on something called an oscilloscope, but in order to do that, we need to use the stereo cable to get the signal into our computer. Using this cut stereo cable, you can remove some of the black insulation with any sharp household object, and now you have a set of electrical probes. So now we'll connect the cable to our breadboard using two resistors to limit the current flowing into our sound card. Along with our stereo cable, we need some oscilloscope software. Let's use one called Soundcard Oscilloscope, which you can download for free for educational use. It installs easily on Windows XP or Windows 7, and in no time you're ready to go. With everything ready, plug in the stereo cable to the microphone port on the computer, and open up the Soundcard Oscilloscope program. Immediately, you can see the 1.5 kHz signal in real time. And if we configure this option here at the bottom, we can also see the voltage levels and frequency of the signal. The sound card oscilloscope program has three sections that we'll use very often throughout this course. In red is where you can change the voltage amplitude or y-axis of the measurement. The blue square shows you where you can change the time interval or x-axis of the signal. The additional green boxes show you where you can configure the program to display the measured voltage and frequency of the input signal. The oscilloscope program might be confusing for you at first, but don't worry too much about becoming a pro at using it right away. You will get more experience with it throughout this entire course, and it will become easier to use. However, do explore it and see how the AC signal can look different with different settings. In the real world, all signals are analog signals. When you make a phone call with your cell phone, it transmits analog AC signals to a cell phone tower. Similarly, when you listen to the radio, your radio is receiving AC signals from the radio station. It is with analog electronics, like filters and amplifiers, that we can achieve such great technology. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. Now that you know about the differences of AC electricity versus DC electricity, Let's go back to learn more about diodes and how they can be used to rectify AC electricity into DC electricity.